The transfer window has finally closed and it was an interesting one. There were some excellent signings by clubs as well as some that were downright strange. In particular, nearly all of Chelsea's transfer campaigns seemed illogical. But there are seven star footballers who could have played for teams competing for Champions League spots, yet somehow ended up at mid-table clubs. One example is Emil Smith-Rowe's transfer to Fulham for £27 million. At one time, Emil and Bukayo Saka were the beacons of hope during very dark times for Arsenal, but over time, only Saka managed to become a key player for the club, while Emil Smith-Rowe simply faded away. Despite countless compliments from Mikel Arteta, Smith-Rowe started getting injured more often and became more of a rotation player, with his minutes on the pitch decreasing year by year. In the last season, he played only 475 minutes, which is frankly very little. However, he is already showing decent form at Fulham, though he will need to get used to the consistent playing tempo. Personally, I hope that in a couple of seasons, he can return to Arsenal and prove to himself that he can play at a high level if given the trust. There are lots logical explanations for this transfer, but no one was prepared for Nicholas Vilkrug's move to West Ham. The German striker with the Hollywood smile signed with West Ham for £27 million, which is quite good for a forward who has been delivering 20 goal contributions per season for the past three seasons. However, the move from a club that regularly plays in the Champions League to a mid-table Premier League team is quite strange. Even though they bought Seru Girassi to fill his spot, he could have joined top teams in Serie A or La Liga. Apparently, the promise of a starting role and a good salary played a significant role in his decision, plus West Ham's style of play suits Phil Krug's profile. I somehow believe that he will perform well in the Premier League and manage to achieve at least 15 goal contributions per season and become a fan favorite for the Hammers. The most senseless transfer by Manchester City remains inexplicable to this day, even to Calvin Phillips, who didn't fit Pep Guardiola's style of play at all. It seems he was bought just to provide competition for Rodri, but with this purchase, Man City shot themselves in the foot for £50 million. Pounds. They have the fun Funds for such transfers, which is understandable, but they clearly ruined the player's career. His loan at West Ham was a complete failure, but there is hope that he can revive his career at Ipswich Town, similar to how Ross Barkley did at Luton. There is a good chance that under Kieran McKenna, he could regain his optimal form and fit perfectly into the Tractor Boys game, but this will take time. On one hand, the move makes sense, but I thought he might be loaned to Bournemouth or Crystal Palace, where they are skilled at working with players like Calvin. Speaking of Bournemouth, they have signed Kepa Arizabalaga on loan. His his story is much more interesting and sad for many reasons. Everyone thought that this summer he would sign a permanent contract with Real Madrid, with the understanding that he would be a backup, but the fate of the Basque goalkeeper was in the hands of Andre Lunin, who was planning to leave the club this summer but ultimately decided to stay for another season with Los Blancos and leave as a free agent. This decision disrupted the plans of Kepa and Chelsea, who had planned to sell Kepa and make some money off him. In the end, Bournemouth stepped in, where he will play in the starting lineup, which isn't bad for the most expensive goal goalkeeper in football history. However, I have a theory that it's quite possible he could still end up at Real Madrid next season. Being at a club like that is more important to him than getting playing time at a mid-table Premier League club. Plus, with Lunin eventually leaving Los Blancos, Kepa will likely try to return there by any means as a backup goalkeeper, and in my opinion this scenario is quite plausible. But fate had an unexpected twist in store for Champions League and World Cup winner Rafael Varane. The French defender, the most decorated and accomplished newcomer to Italian club Como, has seen his career career gradually decline. However, he still has a chance to play at a high level for at least a couple more years despite his injury-prone nature. Despite his financial demands, Como was able to present him with a development plan for the club, and considering that the club's manager is now Cesc Fabregas, this has helped attract high-profile players to the team who can bring experience to the Serie A newcomers. However, some issues have arisen. As is customary, Varane missed a few games due to injury. He eventually took to the pitch, but after just 23 minutes of his debut match for the club, Club, he was injured again. He was subsequently removed from Como's squad for the season as his injury turned out to be much more serious than initially thought and the club is now seriously considering terminating his contract. It's unfortunate that a player who was once personally brought to Real Madrid's youth academy by Zinedine Zidane and who won numerous trophies is slowly winding down his career, not because of his own doing but simply because his body can no longer withstand the physical demands. But I want to continue this video by talking about the transfers of two footballers whose career careers, frankly speaking, have not been going well for one reason or another, and their moves this season only confirm that. After Cristiano Ronaldo's sudden departure from Juventus, the club decided to bring Moise Keane back from Everton for 30 million euros. In his first season after returning, he recorded nine goal contributions across all competitions, eight in the second season and last season exactly zero. In a bid to revive his career, Keane decided to leave Juventus and join a lower-tier club, specifically Fiorentina, for 13 million euros. So far, this 
Moyes' transfer seems to be working out well as Moyes has already scored two goals. Perhaps the early hype surrounding the Italian footballer played a cruel trick on him, but now he has moved to a club that truly matches his current level. With the right approach from the coaches and Keane's personal commitment to returning to top-level football, especially in his home country and in a language he understands, he can become an important player for the club. He might even try his luck with top clubs again in a few seasons. The media attention on him is lower now, which could also help relieve some psychological pressure. I hope he can find his form at Fiorentina and help the club secure another spot in European competitions and maybe even win the Conference League this season. And the last footballer on my list, who Arsenal spent a hefty 80 million euros on five years ago, is Nicolas Pepe. Back then, the Ivorian winger was seen as one of the brightest young talents in European football, with a dazzling combination of speed, dribbling, and goal-scoring ability. At the time, the 80 million euro price tag seemed like a reasonable investment, especially considering his incredible form for Lille, where he was regarded as even more talented than Rafael Leon, who was still an emerging prospect. However, Pepe's career trajectory took a sharp downturn after his move to Arsenal. Despite flashes of brilliance and moments where he showed his true potential, his overall performance at Arsenal was inconsistent. While it would be unfair to label him as the worst signing in the club's history, it's clear that he never lived up to the high expectations that came with such a significant transfer fee. The weight of the price tag undoubtedly placed immense psychological pressure on him, compounded by the intense scrutiny from fans and media alike. It's important to remember that Pepe joined Arsenal during a tumultuous period for the club, and the lack of stability certainly didn't help him find his footing. He wasn't a natural leader, and without strong guidance and support, he found it difficult to shoulder the burden of being the club's record signing. This made him mentally fragile and unable to assert himself as a key player in the squad. Over time, Pepe lost his place in the starting lineup. When his contract with Arsenal ended, Pepe opted for a move to the Turkish club Trabzonspor, a significant step down from the heights of the Premier League. However, his experience in Turkey did little to revive his career. The psychological scars from his time at Arsenal seemed too deep, and even in a less competitive league, he couldn't find the form that had once made him a star in France. In a candid recent interview, Pepe admitted that the pressure of playing in the Premier League, combined with the constant criticism from the media and the high expectations of the Arsenal fans, led him to lose his passion for football. He even considered retiring from the sport, a shocking revelation for someone who is only 29 years old and once viewed as a future star. Despite this, Villarreal has offered Pepe a lifeline, giving him a two-year contract and a chance to reboot his career in La Liga. The Spanish club, known for its supportive environment and strong emphasis on player welfare, seems like an ideal place for him to rediscover his love for the game. What do you think? Which signing was the best during this transfer window? Let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thanks for watching and highly recommend you to check out some of my other videos such as footballers who retired in 2024 and footballers who revived their career, as you can see on your screen. My name is Olay. Love this game. I'll see you next time.